Spectacular job, Thank and my you. goodness, mm -hmm. Anne Hathaway can kick some butt. Who and knew? It turns out, under the right circumstances, uh, that could happen. <laughs> What was it like for you to, you know, get the call from Christopher Nolan or, you know, however it played out and to find out that you were going to be in this film and play Catwoman? Well, it had been a journey to um, just the audition process. It was, you know, first it was rumors that Chris was considering a new female character and then it was, okay, so he's going to meet with a couple girls and then it was, then he told me what the character was and then it was whether or not you were going to be one of the girls invited to screen test. So it was a three and a half month process. So by the time I got it, I was, it just seemed like it, it couldn't possibly happen. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd loved the character since I was a little girl and it just didn't seem possible that it would be a reality in my life. And so then when I did get it and then I went to set and it was one of the best experiences I've ever had working on a movie, it was just, I mean, it's, it's, it's still very, very pinch yourself territory. Yeah, I was gonna ask if it's a bucket list thing for you. I didn't even know it was because it, I mean, there's something Chris, Chris got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame today and, um, he said something about how he's like, I, I literally never thought this would happen to me. And it's the same thing, you just don't imagine that, because Michelle Pfeiffer's performance is so iconic, um, you just don't think that that opportunity will ever come up again. And the fact that it did while I was the right age, I just, it's kind of mind blowing. But it's, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a posthum, it's after the fact, it's a bucket list thing. Um, getting in shape. It's a postscript. It's a postscript, exactly. Um, getting in shape. Like now, when they, you know, you got the role and, you know, you're in great shape and you look always fantastic. But my goodness, there's just probably a lot of special training would have to go into something like that. It was a lot of, it was more time in the gym than I think I had ever spent in my life combined, <laughs> what I had to do for this movie. Uh, it was great. They, they showed me a lot of the stunts that they wanted me to do and a lot of the fighting styles. And Chris had said he wanted me to do all of the things that, uh, that I could. Um, and I'm a hyper competitive person. So I was like, I want to do it all. I'm gonna do everything. Um, so it was about getting myself in the, in, in, a, in good enough shape that I could do all my own fighting, which I was pleased by the end I had. Yeah. And doing it in heels, my dear. And doing it in heels. We had to, I had to learn everything in flats and then slowly ramp it up. Unbelievable. I loved how she just, you know, you lifted your leg over that fat paw. That Thank was you. Pretty cool move. I threw that in in the screen test. I think that helped. <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, working with Christian Bale. Now here you are, you know, you're new. This is the third one. So, you know, a lot of people on this set have worked with them. They know him for nine years. And what was your first impression of him? And what was it like to work with a guy like that? Um, he's a deep, I know this sounds weird because there shouldn't be degrees of authenticity, but he's a deeply authentic person, very, very much himself. He's one of the smartest people I've ever met, and he's just a love. He's just, I loved him instantly, and I still do. I think he's adorable, and, um, and he's just such a great, 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 great actor. I just, every day was, was a privilege. Do you still find at this point that you're learning from these people on the sets that you, you know, uh, you look at this movie, who who was on this set? We're talking, yeah. you know, Michael Caine, Morgan Freeman, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, of course. I hope I always learn from the people that I work with. I mean, especially when you're in this kind of company. I mean, I, I remember coming in one day and I saw Joe and I'm like, hey, you had that scene with Oldman the other day. How was it? He's like, oh my God, I can't even talk about what he did. And then I'm like, I know Christian the other day did this thing, and Michael, and we were just like trading notes about what everybody was doing. It was like, I don't know, trading baseball cards or something. <laughs> but it was, uh, I mean, it was a masterclass every day. Everybody that you saw work and everybody had, I, you know, everyone comes from such different backgrounds, but ever, somehow everyone found the same note to play in the film, and I believe that's that's due to Chris and, and the strength of his and Jonah's script. Yeah, what is it about that man that he just keeps such, everything so calm, yet he delivers, just keeps topping himself with every film? Um, I think the calmness comes from, he's a really good person, um, he's a wonderful father, and so I think he's able to uh, be amidst, uh, be in the midst of chaos and keep his cool. Um, and he's also just, a he has a legitimately brilliant mind, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's become an overused word when what it when, but when I think of brilliance, I think of Chris. And he's, I mean, and it's another overused word, he's, he is a, a genius. These are very, very big words, but he earns them. Um, and he's just, and he's funny as anything, so. He's just, he's, he's, he's kind of too good to be true. And he drinks uh, every, tea. Everything about this film, he drinks a lot of tea. He drinks a, ter he drinks a tremendous amount of tea. I believe that's the secret. It's, it's all about Earl Grey. Exactly. <laughs> uh, your first reaction to yourself looking at yourself in that costume, putting that Catwoman suit on. Do you remember it? Um, 
My first reaction was at the, the camera test, and I still had a ways to go before I was happy with it. But I did have a moment where I was standing with um, Tom, who was in the full Bane getup, and then Christian was wearing the bat suit, and I was dressed as Catwoman, and I said, this is either going to work spectacularly, or we're going to look like rejects from Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> But I think it was the former. <laughs> looked amazing. Okay, I can't leave this room without asking you something about Les Mis. Oh, it okay. is by far my absolute favorite play musical. I've seen it a thousand times. I mean, really, I cannot so wait. I, I, I can't even tell you how excited I am for this movie. And we know you can do everything. We know you can sing. But to sing live, to be on that set, and to have just, you know, you just finished shooting, can you just give me a little taste of what it was like to, sh to be a part of that? Um... It was it was magical, and that one that one is not dissimilar to this one where you just couldn't believe the talent that was around you, um, and how professional and hardworking everyone is. And it was very scary to go to some of the places I had to go to as this character, but um, I had so much support, and I, it's, it just feels like it's my my year of too good to be true dreams coming true. No, it's, you, you so deserve it, and uh, you like I say, you're so great, Matt. I don't think anyone deserves what I'm getting right now. No, you do. Maybe, maybe Gandhi, no, but seriously, uh, not me. <laughs> no, honestly, I've been interviewing you ever since, you know, way back, and you're just a lovely, lovely person, and you do deserve everything, and you're so great in this, and like I say, I'm really counting the days to Les Mis. I'm singing the tunes already from that trailer. <laughs> so great to talk You're to gonna you. You're going to love Hugh Jackman. Thank you. Oh, Hugh Jackman's going to blow your mind. I already do love Hugh Jackman, <laughs> so there's no, there's, you know, you know, nothing more could be better. Thank you.